It's not. It's not water. Why didn't you release your bombs? I lost it. Wait, 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 wait. What is going on? And Hux has spun it. Poe is way out of line. One of the one of the most fundamental laws of physics. Today we're watching Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. What did you think about this episode? Gosh, Last Jedi. I give it a four out of ten. A very low score. Um, lots of problems with the Last Jedi. So in the previous Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, it had lots of problems, but I still enjoyed the journey. It felt like Star Wars. This one, it didn't feel like Star Wars as well as having lots of problems. So it's a pretty low score. The story feels really small. Like it's supposed to be galactic scale, but it feels very small. Uh, the themes are all over the place. Like, is this a simple good versus evil storyline or is everybody that fights bad? or is it complicated or it was unclear. Um, and the story is also all over the place. New elements are introduced, old elements are dismissed, S you know, story breaking elements are introduced. It's, it's all over the place. There's also character problems all over the place. Like Luke, how did he get to this hermit lifestyle? Finn is wasted. Rose, like, she's kind of unfulfilled as a character. Holdo is just mean. It's just problems left and right with characters. Um, I do think there's a good movie in there somewhere, but it just didn't come out. Um, and of course, Haldo's maneuver breaks the universe. Kind of lots of problems there. The slow chase was just awful, didn't make any sense. Haldo and Leia have bad leadership for a kind of no reason. I don't understand that. What was the point of Phasma? Uh, it did look nice though. Generally, it was well acted. I like Kylo Ren. He has a bit of an arc. I like it. Uh, but overall, it's just lots of problems. I don't like it. Four out of 10. What did you think? I give it a three out of 10, <laughs> which was which was a little bit, I mean, it's two to three. I gave it a coin toss, give it a three. Um, so the good thing is that it's Star Wars and I'm, I'm so committed to the Star Wars franchise. It's part of my personality now. I have to watch everything, um, but it was I mean, <laughs> this movie's a problem. Um, Luke and Layla, the, Leia, the their their classic from the original franchise. This is the characters that we grew up on. That we want them to see them doing well and doing cool things, and we got some of that. Um, a good part of Finn is that he's good at everything, which is good because there are like, critical plot points that need Finn to do his thing perfectly, and he does it. So good, right? Um, also, Poe. Poe has this character arc, which is very good. So he starts off this, this hot shot, and then he gets broken down, and he actually becomes a good leader who's who's conscientious about the lives that he's risking. Very good. I like that. Um, but there are cons in this movie, and it's that Finn and Ray they're they're just good at stuff. They, they don't really have to struggle at things that they have to learn and develop, and then become good at, and then finally get to reap the the merits of their hard labor. They just they're just good at stuff. Um, even even Rose is just good at stuff, but she's like a side character. Like, why why does she also have this magic force ability to just just do things great? Very strange. Um, from a physicist's perspective, the physics is broken in this movie. It it's it's um, a <laughs> I I wish I was a consultant on this movie because I could tell them things shouldn't have played out the way that they did it. Um, also, Phasma. I also was irritated at Phasma because Phasma, the actress, was like a big deal at the time. And then and it was like a big deal. She was doing Game of Thrones at the time. It was an important character. It had lots of cool stuff there. Then when they ported her over into Star Wars, it's just it kind of a big old nothing burger. Uh, she got special armor. She got special rank. She got to be in command of people. But also, like, it, just nothing nothing came of it. Um, she, just, she, also, she also didn't even fight that well. She got beat up real quick. Um, there was a forced... forced semi-romance between Finn and Rose. Uh, why did Rose kiss Finn? I, there, I didn't understand why she would do it. It like, felt very uncomfortable. Like It wasn't it wasn't like there was flirtation going on, escalation, and then it happened. Like, it just, she, she did it. I don't know why. Um, Holdo. Holdo is also frustrating for, for seemingly no reason. Like, If Holdo was withholding information from Poe and it made sense why she would do it, then then okay, sure, sure. Strategic, okay, fine. But there was also like chipping and attacking for her. I, I didn't understand why, why it would happen. Uh, and then the worst thing of all is that the plot required frequent leaps of faith. You know, you know this feeling when you're when you're watching a movie and you're like, you're like, like what? Like why? Why did that happen? But in order for you to keep going with the movie, you just got to say like, okay, okay, sure, like sure, we'll we'll run with it and then see where the movie goes. Um, I had to do that too many times in the movie, and so that made the movie feel very choppy and and 
um, at the end of the movie, I don't, th- I get taken out of the emotional journey. I don't feel for the characters because, because I'm caught in this loop of, of like, but why did this happen? Um, so for that reason, I gave it three out of 10, uh, but still, still, I mean, Star Wars, I'm going to have a roughly <laughs> good time. I guess, I guess numerically a good time for me is three out of 10. Uh, so let's, let's see what the good stuff's here. This is the opening of the movie and the rebels are on their base and the first order is coming to attack. I can't believe they don't have any time to get out of there. They should be ready to bug out at all times. Is this an indicator that Leia's leadership just isn't quite there? Let's watch. I think he's exactly right. Let's watch. Okay. The We're fleeing. not clear yet. There's still 30 pallets of cannon shells in sea bunker. Forget the munitions. There's no time. How do we get caught with our pants down? What is going on? Who is in charge of making sure that everything's packed up, ready to go, cleaned up, organized, ready to bug out at all times? Who's the scouts looking around for ships, potential first order contacts? Like, what's going on here? Is this Leia? Leia's the problem. I mean, if it's not Leia directly, Leia needs to give someone else the job to handle this. Like, the first order fleet is here. If you are the last remaining bastion of hope for the galaxy, the last bit of Rebel Alliance, you need to have all of your your stuff squared away, ready to escape just at a moment's notice. Like, this needs to all have been palletized. Like, like effectively live out of your ships because you need to be able to run at any moment. That's right. And they got piping all over the place. There looks like expensive machinery over there on the left. It's just lost. It's just lost when you leave the planet. The Rebel Alliance realize... doesn't have the resources to be wasteful like this. Yeah. So this, yeah, you've actually got to live out of your ship. And anything yep. that's not on the ship, you kind of have to say, well, if that gets stuck here, then it's stuck forever. We're done with that. So, plus, like, you can't have stuff sort of sitting all over the place, not ready to be loaded into things, because you're always on the edge. And who right. enforces that kind of discipline? The leader. The leader. So, so I think this, this gives me the feeling that Leia leads like a king. Like, by mm-hmm. that, I mean, it's like a one person at top, like, I give the commands, and then people do that. And, and I mean, if she's... I think I really think she's like the the moral heart, the emotional heart of the of the rebel cause, which means she's trying to do that and logistics and combat and lit and others. So it, it's too many things for one person. She needs to be a president who has a cabinet around them and says like, "You're the logistics officer. Like, make sure our ships are always ready to jump, ready to go." And so that person will come around and be like, mm, "I can't have stuff sitting around because if we need to escape, it's going to be sitting around and not in the ships." So it sounds like Leia is really bad at delegating authority to experts who know what they're talking about. That would solve this. That would solve this. This just can't, this just can't happen. The resources for this rebel alliance, this tag team, a rag, rag tag team of just a few people, yeah. a handful of people, like a hundred or a thousand, a uh, thousand people. You can't be losing resources like this. You gotta be ready to jump. That's right. Even human resources, like look at these people running around like headless chickens here. They need to be on their ships and out. The first order ships are here. That's right. The ships, yeah, they're here. The fleet, all they got to do is send TIE fighters down. Or they can even bombard from space. Right. That's right. Which we know they can do. Yeah. And this is part of the battle above, I don't know what planet that was. Um, Poe has like a new engine on his, this is not an X-Wing. What is this? It's an X-Wing. It's an X-Wing, but but it's like a a special engine to it. He has a special engine on it. Where'd the special engine come from? I don't know. So he has the he has the four on each wing. The standard the four sta- out here. The standard four looks like they jerry rigged a new one on in anticipation. He's got bent pipes and everything. It's super jerry rigged. <laughs> super jerry rigged. Yeah. It also looks like a regular rocket engine, which is weird. It does. It does. It, yeah. It, it breaks Star Wars tech because yeah, this is how you do like extra f- extra combustion behind the engine for rocket engines. Yeah. You just have a flame and you just, just blast fuel into it. So it's like an afterburner. So, oh yeah, that's weird. Is is that is that even worth jerry rigging onto an X wing? It doesn't even look like he goes that fast. Yeah, I don't know. Super weird. Plus, where did they buy the engine? Maybe from some arms dealers. Sure. I mean, that makes yeah. sense. Where are they going to get yeah. stuff? Our arms dealers. Yeah, arms dealers. Yeah. I mean, they don't have like a foundry to make the metal and stuff. Like they're getting stuff from arms dealers. That's right. I mean, they're so small at this point. There's no way they're running factories. 
Right. No way. And this is another part of the battle. Who's in charge here? Poe gives the order to continue the bombing. Leia says no. Why does the fleet or the bombers follow Poe's orders? I don't understand. Let's watch. Now get your squad back here. No, General, we can do this. Can you so, break that down for me a bit? What do you mean? Like, can you clarify what happened here? So Leia is in charge. Okay. And Poe is just a fighter pilot out doing the battle. Maybe he's the leader of a group of fighter pilots, mm -hmm. but he's fairly low on the totem pole in terms of being able to give commands. So Leia says, come back. So that's it. You should be coming back. Not only that, Poe disagrees with Leia and says we should continue the bombing run. Somehow Poe's idea of continuing the bombing run over... What is it? What is overrides? The, overrides Leia's mm -hmm. authority, and they can the bombers continue the bombing run. I don't understand why the bombers uh, and all the other people follow Poe's idea instead of the general's idea. What that's right. So when when Leia, the commander of the fleet, says pull out, and then everyone else keeps going, keeps going. Hmm. Leia I guess there are questions of, is so. I guess I don't know what happens in modern military versus what happens here. But mm -hmm. if Leia is the commander, she doesn't talk to the foot soldiers. Like, like she talks to like the command goes down the hierarchy. So, yep. does she talk with Poe, who's the commander of the air group, and then it's his job to disseminate the information? I would think so. Well, let, first off, let's say you're out of radio communication, okay. meaning the bombers and Leia can't communicate, and the orders sure. were to continue okay. the bombing run. They would continue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if they have radio communication and Leia says pull out, then mm -hmm. they pull out. Right. And since Leia is talking to Poe, it sounds the reason that Leia can talk to the bombers. Right. So I mean, even if the communication is supposed to go through chain of command, it is supposed to go to Leia, mm -hmm. to Poe, then to everyone else. Mm -hmm. At the point where Poe is defying orders, then you would just ra change radio frequency and cut them out. Right? Cut them out. You, yeah. you talk directly to the bombers and say, everyone get back. Everyone get back. Interesting. And then, and then later on in the movie, they blame Poe for the debacle of the bombers. But actually, it's Leia's fault. You yeah. can't have insubordinate people overriding your decisions. That's right, because Leia has the strategic command. She's a, she's the one in the command ship, the the big ship that has the vision of what's going on in the battle, and is, she has the awareness to say like, no, 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 get everyone get out. If you have yeah. an insubordinate leader, you get the leader out, you get everyone back home. That's that's actually Leia's fault. Leia's fault, yeah. So in Poe's fighter, there's a there's an electricity breakdown, some circuit breakdown, and BB-8 solves it. But he solves it in a way that it it looks cartoonish. Yeah. BB-8, my weapon systems are down. Work your magic, buddy. Yeah. I mean, I'm down yeah. for BB-8. All right. So there's like some sparks, and he plugs it. But <laughs> that wouldn't work. Whoa. Okay. He just, he just jammed his whole head. And it worked. Yeah! All clear. So it's, I mean, okay. So, okay. So in lower division physics, we teach, we teach fluids first, then electronic mm -hmm. and then circuits because like the equations are very similar. Fluids are yep. very easy to visualize. And then you move to, to circuits, which are, mm -hmm. it's harder to visualize where electrons are moving. But if you understand how fluids mm -hmm. move, then it's pretty similar. And now, so I think that's what was going on here. BB-8 sees this this resistor that's broken out of its circuit, mm -hmm. and so he like plugs it. He like he like I don't know. I guess there's maybe an electrical contact there, and then he but then he, mm -hmm. he goes on and does a bit more. So yeah. he plugs this thing. It's like it's as if it's like bursting out water. And he plugs it with his finger, and then there's another break here. So there's there's more water, so to speak. There's more electricity. Mm -hmm flying out of this hole so he plugs it with this other prong but that's it, but it's not it's not it's not water it's it's electricity right and so what he's done now is just he's made a, a short circuit from whatever this circuit was over to this circuit so i mean if it wasn't broken before like it's broken now for sure right and water is not sorry electricity is not water in the sense that it can't leak out of a circuit like water it has to have a path to leak out yeah and he's providing the path <laughs> that BB-8 is the path of the water. <laughs> and, and it looks like he's bypassing critical components of the circuit Gosh. by attaching metal-to-metal -metal contact across mm -hmm. the circuit. 
Mm-hmm. I just don't see how this thing would work. I mean, but he jams his whole head in and it does work. So, okay. <laughs> sure. Man, it's just not a critical component. Oh, yeah. He jammed his whole head in there. Yeah. That's just going to wreck the whole device. Gosh. I mean, I guess it's possible that you have a broken circuit and you break another circuit that fixes the first one. <laughs> and BB-8's head is just perfectly shaped to break enough things to make it all work. Maybe there's two of these. There's redundancy, and it needed to be broken fully to switch over to, switch to, switch over the, to the auxiliary one. circuit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So BB-8 he should never have tried to fix smart. it. <laughs> oh, and then there's the bombing run. I just did not understand why the bombs fall because there's no falling in space. And also having the arming device that drops arms and drops the bombs be this loosey goosey remote in the cabin. <laughs> what is going on? Let's watch. Target. He has to okay. walk over here, grab the Lucy Greasy thing. Why isn't this remote control connected to anything? Yeah. Someone could walk off the ship with this, and then the, the, the whole bomber doesn't work. <laughs> why, why didn't you release your bombs? I lost it. I like, was like, where is it? Like, <laughs> is I left it, it in my car because <laughs> I thought it was a garage door opener. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh my gosh. Gosh, is it labeled? Could you swap this with another bomber? Mm -hmm. Oh no! Ooh. Plus, just have this cabled in. Have a cable. When I have this cabled in, they've got you've got this like I don't know command control panel here that should be manned at all times, especially during a bombing run. And there, that person strapped in, shrink, ready to go, and they'll hit the proper the, the button. Is just hovering over the button just all the time, That's just right. ready to pop it. As soon as the pilot or whoever's in command says drop them, boom, done. Mm -hmm. This guy had to like. This could this he could be getting thrown around the cabin. He's like, I can't get over there because I can't walk across the grating because I'm getting thrown around the cabin. I guess we're just not gonna bomb. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's not a big deal if you're going to the grocery store because like it's just nearby home. But this is like a critical bombing mission. Like you need to have everyone you you need to have the bomber do the mission. And if this person rolls their ankle, like the mission's over. Like you need to have a second person. That's right. Plus, it looks like the stations, the little, um, I don't know, no stations chair? are, yeah, there's no chairs or straps. Just get it. And they're too low. <laughs> you get a squat, squat to That's work. Right. They're like just above knee level. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Imagine the back problems. Maybe this is made for a species that aren't humans. It must right? be. Because the, the Rebel Alliance has a bunch of different aliens, right? That's right. And they, they are buying weapon systems that may be designed for other species this is just the cheapest one and but so the head height is good so it's designed for peep for alien species of human height but long arms okay sure i don't okay. i don't know what the okay. galaxy has all right yeah. sure. i don't know what the galaxy has either all right. species that doesn't like chairs and a species that likes to pocket their remote controls <laughs> just can't can't just cable it in can't just cable it in just cable it in you oh, you have the stations yeah i mean yeah yeah and it almost met, led to a critical failure on the mission that's the that's right that's right this is just more this picture right here is more evidence that leia is struggling in the leadership position this is critical medical supplies just strewn about a room this needs to be organized inventoried and ready to be used kind of at all times they are limited on resources what is going on i see what you're saying so at first glance, it's just like, yeah, it's a little messy room. That's not a big deal. But actually, it's a it is a big deal because this is a ship. This is like a this is a spaceship, which is analogous to a, like a navy <laughs> ship, right? And like yep. stuff needs to be dialed in. Stuff needs to be tight. Stuff needs to be organized. You can't have the you can't have like like say if, say if um, Finn here it gets in an emergency, mm -hmm. like, like like the alarms are going off, the beep beep yep. beep, right? They're like like patients crashing, patients crashing. The doctor runs in here, trips on something, hits his head, like. Mm -hmm. And so you need you need a you need a XO I think maybe or maybe a command master chief that like walks yeah. around the ship and is like yelling at people like hey like shipmate why is that broken like why is this yeah. why is this clear clean it up clean it up or you're yeah. going to get latrine duty like yeah, yeah you need someone to come in and make sure everything's ship shape ship shape yeah. organized yeah, that's the word. Yeah. I mean take that machine in the back right there mm -hmm. yeah 
If somebody, if it was an emergency, somebody needed to use that machine. How am I wheeling it out of there? There's all this oh, stuff gosh. in the way. Yeah, I was even, I was only thinking about someone going into there. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. If they need to move this to a different room, like you can't. You just you can't. shove this stuff into the hallway. <laughs> now you have another problem. Now you have another problem. Yeah, so they do need an XO or somebody walking around being like, hey, get that room organized. Hey, where does that go? Why is it dirty over there? If you What's have time on? to lean, you have time to clean. Yeah, that okay. guy goes around, does everything like that. That's right, yeah. This is another indication right here. Open flames and engine testing on a non-clear hangar deck deck. Like there's a person right there. Yeah, there needs to be at least like that, you know, like that velvet rope, <laughs> like do not cross. <laughs> or you know, like the yellow, black, stripey tape that says like don't walk in this area. It's super dangerous. Super dangerous. There's gonna ha they're gonna have an accident. Oh. I guess you could make everything around it non-flammable. <laughs> yep, you make everything around it's non-flammable. So then you just this this engine can just fire whenever it wants. I mean, I, I know there's there's they don't have a lot of space. So you oh, need to come up with sure. a system to get the deck clear so that people can test fire their engines before going, if that's necessary. Mm -hmm. It just can't sure. be all over the place. Yeah. You know? They're pretty willy gonna... nilly. Yeah. Leadership. And then this is the losses from the bombing run. All of the bombers are done because Leia didn't make Poe follow orders. I see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bombers. Mm -hmm. Three X wings and an A wing. They just don't have the resources. It's. Oh. Gosh, yeah, which means when you have a very small fleet, you need to be very careful with them, which means Leia needs to vet her, her officers. That's right. I think Poe has to be off flight status at this point. He just. He, it's better to have somebody who follows orders who's not as skilled than some hotshot guy disobeying orders he all the time. He just can't. It's just gonna kill people, and he did kill people. Yep. To take out a single destroyer. Oh, yep. Yeah. Bummer. Yep. Yeah. Hux is an is it a master administrator? He Hux is a master leader. <laughs> He's a master politician. He mm -hmm. knows how to smooth talk Snoke. Let's watch. <laughs> Tied on a string indeed, General Hux. Well done. People people shoot on Hux, but like this is super clever because because the rebels escaped. They got past the barricade. And they're like, they're right behind the the Snoke ship and they can't, Snoke ship can't quite catch him. And so Hux spun this. He spun it into like, you know, we have him tied to a string. Like we're just, we're letting them pull us around, but we've got them like so clever. Right. It's a failure. They had the rebels dead to rights on the, the surface of the planet. The rebels were able to escape. They're still on the run. That's it's a, a failure. Trip. And Hux has spun it. He's got Snoke. Yes, it's an, it's a that's oh, what we wanted to happen. Oh, very good, Hux. Oh, very Hux, good. Oh yes, very good. Ooh. Hux is underrated. Oh, my God, underrated. He went into Snoke's room, this this huge throne room, intimidated. unintimidated, and was able to smooth talk the head guy into getting on board with the failure. This the guy's literally force user, and he just he just talked him out of it. He just talked him out of anger. Just... <laughs> Hux, amazing. Incredible. Hux, underrated character. So this is slightly after that discussion where Kylo Ren gets gets insulted like a kid from, from Snoke and he gets to this temper tantrum. But just imagine being one of these, these crewmen. Oh, so angry. So angry. That's your, that's your own helmet. Oof. Prepare my ship. Can you imagine being one of these people? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're there just checking your spreadsheets, like doing, I don't know, like delivery of goods, just making sure everything's okay. And then like the boss comes out and he's like, prepare my ship. And you're like, uh, I guess, like, <laughs> sure. Like that's not yeah. my job, but I, it's my job today. Yeah, the probability that these two are in charge of getting ships prepared on the first order craft is low. They could be anybody. 
Kylo Ren just runs around the ship, like yells orders at everyone and just at anyone, and is just like, "Do it!" And it was like, "I'll figure uh-huh. out who I'm supposed to talk to." Maybe, maybe the, between all the the lower people, there's like an understanding that if Kylo tells you something, if if you get on the horn and tell the person that's supposed to do something, like I understand, you're not giving me an order. This is coming from Kylo. I know he's a bit of a loose cannon. Mm-hmm. Like, thank you for telling me. <laughs> I wonder if there's like uh, like on every phone there's like a special number that goes up to the bridge and there's an officer like in charge of handling Kylo Ren's <laughs> orders like like special ring like oh Kylo said this like okay well yeah we'll take care okay. of it like we'll, we got you yeah so anybody of any rank can send messages up to that phone mm-hmm. they can say oh it's a Kylo thing and then they send it out down the correct chain of command right <laughs> 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 yeah because Kylo's just running around giving orders to anyone anyone he just these people were just taking the elevator. He like yells at stormtroopers all the time. Like, <laughs> I'm just a these people's jobs. <laughs> I just shoot things. Like, I don't... Mm-hmm. So Luke makes fun of lightsabers by calling them laser swords, like they're not powerful. Let's watch. Did you hear a word I just said? I think what? I'm gonna walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole first order. I mean, yes. Yeah. Jed- Jedi and Sith are always in positions of power because of their ability to use the Force and lightsabers. Yeah. So yes, right. Yeah, and I mean, Luke went up against Palpatine and took down the old Empire. Like, like he's actually done that before. That's right. He's not literally taking on. In in Return of the Jedi, Luke was not literally taking on the Death Star all by himself, but he was able to make a beeline for leadership and have enormous influence. Yeah. So do the same thing here. What's the issue? I mean, the can the Jedi be assassins if they're assassinating a Sith Lord? Like, that's okay, right? That's okay. That's what we're asking you to do. Mm-hmm. Like, and who's the most capable of taking out a Sith Lord? A Jedi. A Jedi. That's what they nope. do. And it's hard to kill them. So if they're on a, on a mission to go assassinate somebody, regular troops and droids can't stop them. So, yes, go take out the First Order with your laser sword, Luke. <laughs> You're the person that's the best suited to do it. Like, please, yeah. please, sir, go do it. Please, please go do that. Otherwise, we have to, like, muster millions of troops to take on the First Order, which is harder. Or, like, a surgical precision person that's trained their entire life with magic powers. Like, yeah, please, please yeah, do it. Yeah, please, please, please. Save lives. Yeah. Mm. And it's a laser sword. It's much better than just a regular sword. That's right. So Luke goes fishing on his island. How does he get the fish out of the water? That's the pole vault thing. Super, super risky. Yeah. It can only be, a, it can only be poked in this angle. He gets it. How did he get the it's, fish up? There's a jump cut there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so he, okay, so he is still holding <laughs> onto his fishing pole, rod, yeah. spear, fishing spear. And so he could just one hand at a time, just pull it up. But then you get this like, but then you're like holding a pencil from yeah, yeah. from the top. So it's like super teeter tottery. <laughs> yep. Um, that's one way. The other way, which I, th- I think makes more sense, is you, is you, from the top, you lift mm-hmm. it. You lift it up halfway, and yeah. then it's balanced so that yeah. you can rotate it sideways. And then you prop up the top side against the the hill, and then you like inch it inch it forward until you can grab the fish. What if? Okay, okay, I like this. So you you half. You go, okay, I got a pen here. Yeah. Do I have a pen here? I do. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Okay, so we got pen. You you lift it up halfway. Halfway. And then you're able to rotate it. And, and then maybe it. he's able to just rest one end on one side of the cliff, the other end on another side of the cliff. It just rests. Yeah. And then he can climb out, walk mm-hmm, over, mm-hmm. remove the fish, and then redeploy. Put the, from, put the spear back down. Put the spear back down. In fact, that's how he gets it back to the position where he pole vaults from. Ah. Okay. I like that. He could just use the force. You could just use the force and grab the fish from the ocean. Yeah. And like bunk it on the head on its way up would be, be yeah. a nice, nice and easy procedure. 
That's plausible. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I like it though. I don't like this. Leia, it's just she's got terrible leadership. And this is an example of Leia's terrible leadership with Poe. She does many bad things, I think. Let's let's watch and then we'll, we'll... She's a good leader in some ways. Just in other ways, drops the ball. You're demoted. Well, wait, Physically we took down hits a dreadnought. It. At what cost? You start an attack, you follow it through. Poke get your head out of your cockpit. There are things that you cannot solve by jumping in an X-Wing and blowing something up. I need you to learn that. There were heroes on that mission. Dead heroes. No leaders. So, so three things. One is she physically hits him. That's a no-no. You do not hit people. If you're in a position of leadership, you should not be hitting anyone. Number two. She's explaining something to an insubordinate underling. Like there's times for explanation and mentorship. And there's times for like, put him in his place. Like there's no time for explanation here. He disobeyed. That's final. I'm the leader. Done. That's right. You can deal with the explanation. Especially in front of everyone. That's right. Ready room. Yeah. He needs a dressing down. This is, has to happen. Number three, she, Leia allows Poe to physically grab her arm and restrain him. That is, he needs to get, that just cannot be allowed to happen. Either she Gosh. gets in his face and says, do not touch me like that. Or yeah. uh, one of her guards physically pushes him down to the ground and says, you do not touch the leader in that manner. Imagine but, if every time you disagree with the leader, you can just push him against the wall and be like, explain yourself. Be like, right. wait, a, wait a minute. Right. So her leadership, so physically hitting him, mm-hmm. explaining to him at an inappropriate time, and then being herself, her, letting herself be physically restrained by an insubordinate pilot. Yeah. If okay. I was in the room, I'd be like, "What? Who? What is is Leia in charge?" That's right. Everyone in this bridge here is watching this go down and saying, mm, "Maybe I shouldn't follow Leia because she's not really in charge." She's not really in charge. Who is in charge? Yeah, so ultimately, ultimately, gosh, okay. So ultimately, <laughs> Leia needs to be in command because everyone else needs to think she's in command. That's right. And part of that is is uh, not slapping people <laughs> and uh, not yeah. letting them push you around and talking to them at the appropriate times. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I still, I still think she's a good leader for the Rebel Alliance. It's just some, some things could be tweaked. Some leadership courses needed. Gosh, I do not agree. I just think she's just a terrible leader. Oh, so I mean, I, mean, I think I mean, she could be a spokesperson and a, and a moral compass. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking spiritual leader slash moral mm-hmm. compass slash evangelist, this type of thing. But in terms of logistics and strategy, yeah, maybe she shouldn't be in charge. I mean, even this, but this is an interpersonal thing right here. Not even, this isn't logistics or... Tactics well, yeah, that's or what strategy saying. Saying for logistics and tactics. She's she's not on par. She should be mm-hmm. she should be delegating that to someone else. Agreed. And for this interpersonal stuff, yeah, maybe she's just not the right person for that. Maybe she's maybe she's stretched too far by the war and she's not. She's put in a position that she shouldn't be. She's trying to be a king. She needs to delegate that out to other people. All right. So it seems like the command of the fleet and the command of this ship needs to be somebody else. So she doesn't have to get into these kerfuffles with people. Which, which I think is normal, right? Like if you get yeah. an admiral on the ship with the captain, the admiral has the vision for the battle group, but then yep. in terms of actually maneuvering the ship, it's the captain that, that that's their ship. That's their ship, yeah. Actually, who is the captain of this ship they're having this discussion on? It's actually unclear, I think. I think it's I think it's Leia. She's I think she's captain and admiral of the ship. I don't think you can be both. Yeah, I think it's not it's not good. I think I think in the in the Force Awakens there was the squid guy. That's racist. I shouldn't call him that, but I forgot his name. Mon Calamari. Mon Calamari. Thank you. His, what's his name? He's Admiral Akbar. Was that Akbar? Was it a different okay, guy? I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. if okay. Um, that, that that race. Yeah. So he was the captain. I think he died, mm. and they just never replaced him. I see. Hmm. Bummer. Bummer. Leia, we need some a leadership retreat to talk about not hitting your subordinates. Yep. Okay, and then they get into this. So leaving the planet, the rebel ship gets chased down by Snoke's ship plus the fleet. 
And so it was very strange to see this because we have star destroyers in space, but it's like 19, it was like 19, 1500s naval tactics. Let's watch, it looks like a, a Navy fight mm -hmm. from the 1500s in boats. Yeah, like these like cannon shots and we're gonna follow behind. We need to get out of range of those star destroyers. All craft, full engines, concentrate, free a shield. We can't blow up three tiny cruisers. I mean, that's right. They can't blow up three tiny cruisers. So, so this is a weird fight scene because. What first of all, they're shooting projectiles in space, mm -hmm. and if, unless they're near some heavy gravitational well, a planet or or a star or a black hole or something, I don't understand why these projectiles, why, why they would arc like that. I think they should just be straight shots. So that's weird. It, it felt like a naval battle just translated mm -hmm. into space. Agreed. Um, and then also, they're all lined up in this plane, but why? I mean, it's space. You can go anywhere. So it should be 3D attacks uh, from, from every angle. And and yeah, it is effective. Like they're, they are splashing hits, but what's holding them back? I don't, I don't get it. So with respect to the, tra the trajectories of the plasma bolts, laser bolts, what is it in Star Wars? Uh, um, ion, ion cannon. Ion cannon. Um, so there's no gravity or any reason yeah. for them to be falling or having a trajectory in space other than a straight line yeah. um, but maybe they're doing it on purpose to try to hit different parts of the shield no but then the, okay so then they would be doing like yeah yeah like this kind of thing like what the the projectiles always up, go in the same direction they sort of volume they volume this way but if it was if they could control the arc they would be doing from all kinds of different angles which we don't see you would do all sorts of different angles because then the rebels cannot push their shields to one location. They'd have to evenly right. spread out their shields everywhere and then you could you could weaken them quickly like that. So so do we ever see the arcing happen in a different direction? Uh, no, it's it's always as if gravity's down. Yeah. So you think there'd be a mirror mirror image of these guns on the other side of the ship and they would be the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't see it. The, as far as I can tell, they don't have it. Yeah, here, we'll, here's, I mean that's a good shot right, right there. It's this this green projectile it comes from top and curves down. Yeah. Why? There's just no reason. Okay, there is a reason. We're saying try, they want to hit different parts of the shields. Okay. So that they the rebels can't strengthen shields on one sector. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't make sense because then they would have it becoming at many different angles. Right. So it just curve, looks... Curve, curve in every direction. Yeah. And so it just kind of looks silly. Right. So it feels like these, these captains who live in space are stuck in a 2D mind, as if it's from a, a 1500s Navy battle where you're stuck to the surface of the ocean <sighs> and you have a clear gravitational down. Weird. Which makes no sense because every battle in Star Wars happens in space. I mean, with these big ships. Yeah, so yeah, the people yeah. running these ships, captaining these ships, have never seen a Navy vessel or never captained one. I mean, gosh, in the, in the year in which these ships are made, I don't know if they would have ocean battles anyway. Anyway, like you would just you'd go into you would go you would either fly or be straight up into space. Like, yeah. I think people's brains would work differently. You'd think 3D a lot more. That's right, because you're seeing that they're in this plane here where the star destroyers are behind the big thing, mm -hmm. which I forget what it's called. Snow Whereas ship, they, I don't remember. they should be deployed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should have ships down here, up here, all, mm -hmm. all over the place. In fact, in fact, that's that's the next video. It's it's why do they have a fleet at all? Proximity alarm. So okay, a bunch cool. of ships. Whoa. And then Snoke's big boy. Mm -hmm. And what we saw in the previous video is that only Snoke's ships attack. Only Snoke's ship attacks. You mm -hmm. got this whole fleet here that could be like jump ahead and then attack from different angles. That's uh, right. Or even, or even like jump down and attack from, from the bottom. But uh, only Snoke, only Snoke ships shoots and they shoot these like projectiles as a gravity. Very strange. 
Right. They have all these. They have doing the slow chase, mm -hmm. right, like this. And then they ha they have the the big ship, and then a bunch of these star destroyers, and then they never try to do anything with the star destroyers. Right. The if here's the rebel ship, the star destroyers could jump ahead and turn around and attack up or from the yep. side or all sorts of different things, all sorts of things that can leverage your three D ness of space. Uh, but right. they just kind of hang out there to be intimidating, but never fire. Never fire, yeah. Never deploy fighters. Never deploy fighters. It's it's only yeah. It might as well have just been Snoke ship. I mean, if you have this many star destroyers, how many Tie fighters are on each star destroyer? Probably a hundreds. Bunch, a bunch. Yep. So deploy all the Tie fighters and send them to the Rebel fleet. Yeah. And so, gosh, one of the reasons why they didn't like Snoke ship did deploy to fight TIE fighters, but the rebel ships were fast enough to get out of range mm -hmm. that the Snoke ship could not shoot projectiles and support the fighters. But then you could just jump a ship ahead and then have that, that ship support the fighters. That's right. And let's say the ship, the, the light speed jump is too short. You can't, you can't make that really short jump. So that means you jump parallel pa perpendicular okay. and then jump right back. Ah, so can, instead of like jumping forward, you jump to the side and then back. And then sure. back. So sure. if the, the fleet is here and I can't make this jump, that's too short. I make a long jump over here and a, and a long jump back. And now I'm where I need to be. Yep. And I could do that for each Star Destroyer and surround them. <laughs> the only reason I can I came up with why that you wouldn't do that is because you're sailing on boats on top of the ocean. <laughs> So then it's just a straight chase, but yeah. I, I can't make my ship, my, I can't make my, my 1500s French, whatever boat. I can't make it like teleport. <laughs> like I can't make it go sideways and then forward. Like, yeah, yeah but just gotta chase it. You can in Star Wars. Apparently they can't. Next because it, it, it just doesn't make sense. What does make sense, Noah, the super doesn't either, is this family style dinner where mm -hmm. Chewbacca is hungry. These are porgs, I think. Mm -hmm. Little birds. Okay. Okay. What is going on here? What, wait, 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 what is going on? So he's, like, he's eating this bird. Sure, he's he's carnivore. And then these other birds, are they family? Like, are they, are they, okay, two scenarios I can think of. There's, there's one scenario where they're like, no, you're eating my brother. This is terrible. This is sad. The other scenario is they're like, I'm hungry. I want some of that too. Like, is there any scenario where this is not just, just super dark scene. <laughs> it's super dark. Cannibalism or eating family in front of the family. I mean, this looks like Kitty Kitty Face wants some snack. Like this is like I'm, I'm a stray cat. I want some to eat this. I always interpreted that face as Chewbacca is eating that guy's friend or family. And so he's sad. And watching it? Go away. And, Turn around. Don't watch your friend get eaten. I mean, okay, okay. Trauma response in the moment. Okay, it, it can Don't, be weird. That's right. It can be weird, right? And he's That's just right. sort of frozen watching his friend, his friend's corpse get ripped apart by, by teeth. By teeth. And yeah, gosh. Or he's a cannibal. What? I want what? some. It's just so dark. I'm hungry. It's one of the darkest scenes ever. Yeah. It's so dark, brutal. Mm. Oh, I don't. I'm, it just feels so out of place. It it's it it's so dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Star Wars is supposed to be a bit silly, but like yeah. But gosh dang, <laughs> dang. But yeah, this but scene. dang. <laughs> Okay, more terrible leadership problems yeah. in the fleet. Let's just watch it and see. Vice Admiral, Commander Dameron, with our current fuel consumption, there's a very limited amount of time that we can stay out of range of those Star Destroyers. Oh, so so stop this over here. Them. Look, look at their body language right now. Holdo is saying, I'm busy doing these other things. I got a screen in front of me, I got people. And why are you hovering and talking in that tone? 
Like this needs to be shut down immediately. You can't be talking like this to the leader. Oh, you're saying Poe is out of line. Poe is way out of line. The tone and the body language and ignoring Holdo's leadership is, so, is unreal. He should be reading her body language, saying like, this person that I'm trying to talk to is not listening to me. Uh, I'm in the wrong right now. They're, the per This person who's above me is doing something important. I need to find who I'm supposed to report to and tell them. Agreed. So that one, yes. Also, if Holdo feels this insubordination from Poe, she needs to turn directly face him without ridicule or like, but like face him and tell him to be quiet. It's not, it's not ridicule. It's not, it's not making him feel like crap, which she does later, <laughs> but like, stop. Tell him it's, not the time and place. Tell me, yeah. report to the correct person. Don't tell me, yeah. don't talk to me right now. That's right. If you have issues, I am willing to listen, but you need to sh need to be quiet right now. That's right, because he could be interrupting something that's very important, that's much that's more right. important than what he has to say. Mm -hmm. So she responds to this, as we'll see just right now, with ridicule, name calling, and other things, which is just, I don't agree with this leadership style. Bad leadership. Before we can find a new base, so what's our plan? Captain, not commander, right? Wasn't it Leia's last official act to demote you for your dreadnought plan? Where we lost our entire bombing fleet? I just want to know what's going on. Of course you do. I've dealt with plenty of Reasonable. trigger happy flyboys like you. You're impulsive, dangerous, and the last thing we need right now. So stick to your post and follow my orders. I thought it was reasonable that he wanted to know what was going on mm -hmm. because he, even though he's demoted, I thought it was like a paper demotion. Like he's still the commander of the air group, which is like six people, right? But he's still the commander of the air group. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was reasonable that he know, like, what are we doing? Like, where are you telling me to mm -hmm. fly people to? I think, I think it's totally reasonable for him to want to know and question what's going on, but there's a time and a place. Hmm. Um, and she, Holdo doesn't have to tell him what's going on. Um, she also, the stay at your post and follow my orders is actually very reasonable, but she didn't need any of the additional name calling or ridicule beforehand. It's just stay at your post, follow my orders. This, this is my style. Well, so there's no discussion. Gosh. And if she knows his rank, he does, she doesn't need to rub it in. She just right. calls him by his new rank. Right. Done. And if they need to do a debrief or a after action s report after what happened, they can do that. But is this the time and place to do it? Yeah, in front of people too. In front of people? Like, I mean, gosh, putting him down and making him feel bad just puts f fuel under his fire to disobey more. Disobey more. I mean, gosh, I, yeah. And if she does know his type of personality, then just maneuver around it. That's right. And if, if she thinks he's going to be a real problem, then she has the power and authority to remove him from his position. Hmm. I, I didn't understand yeah. her leadership. Skills. And she never tried to build him back up again. That's a critical you know? component. Come back later and be like, I said those things. I mean it, but I think you're good. I think you can I think do good this. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to see this out of you. Gosh. Blah, blah, blah. Both. Leah, Leah, both Leah and Holdo never told Poe, like, I'm building you up for command. I want you to be taking this position in two years. Let's, let's get yeah. you to these milestones. Like, get them on board. Get them on board. Yeah. We're like, we're, well, I'm looking out for you. I need you in a position of leadership and I need these qualities from you. Gosh. In fact, in fact, you get him, you get him super on board because you know his emotional, like his leverages where he wants the Republic, the, the, not the Republic, he wants the Rebel Alliance to do well. So you say, the Rebel Alliance is going to need new leaders. I want that to be you. These are the things that I need, think leaders need to have. Let's teach mm -hmm. them to you. And you can get them on board real quick. Get them on board real quick. They do none of that. Interesting. And so I think correctly, we'll see there's Poe goes against her leadership later. I think he's correctly seeing weakness. That's right. And if he's thinking about the overall mission of the Rebel Alliance, that, and if your leaders are weak, you need to replace them. Mm-hmm. Or at least work around them. That's right. Okay, back to science, though. <laughs> this is a weird scene. So momentum does not seem to be concerned, but you, I mean, you watch. You watch, make your own opinion. Okay, listen. <laughs> nope. 
So she, he's Finn is probably 160, 180 pounds. Yeah. And Seems Rose right. is probably 120 pounds. Something, I don't know. Something like that. Uh, it's hard to tell because we don't really know how tall they are. But if he's going to be flying <laughs> one way with, say, 180 pounds and she's 120, she needs to pick up a higher velocity in the opposite direction in order for this I mean, momentum to be conserved. She needs to move at all. <laughs> she, she doesn't budge. She doesn't budge at all. Absolutely rock solid. Yeah, so, yeah, he gets thrown back. She doesn't move at all. Gosh, what an incredible weapon that would be. Or, I mean, even mm -hmm. if it wasn't a weapon. If you, you, if you could just get forward motion for free, mm -hmm. like, turn that into an engine. Get, yeah, get like, I mean, a thousand of these and strap them to an X-Wing. Right. This device, this stun gun thing, needs to be researched because he they're getting free motion it's, without reaction gosh it's it so breaks my mind because i've never seen anything like that because it doesn't exist so I, I can't even come up with an analogy and, and in just, this case incredible. this isn't this is like a physics class example there's mm -hmm. really not much there's no anchoring there's no much there's not much friction this right. is really an explosion between two objects one has to go one way the other has to go the other way. There's nothing. There's there's no complications in this. This is just momentum conservation is broken here. One of the one of the most fundamental laws of physics. Yep. CS, so yes, watch it one more time. She doesn't even like tip backwards. She doesn't even tip. Just rock solid. Boom. She leans in a little bit. A little bit. All right. A little bit. <laughs> But I mean, he goes flying. What is that? Like five, ten feet? Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we saw with Chewie's bowcaster in The Force Awakens how the That's momentum right. was broken. And here it's broken. Maybe this tech is on ships because we don't actually see when they move forward. We don't actually see much fuel being expelled. That's true. Backwards. Maybe that is how their engines work. They, the engines turn on. They glow blue or red, and then the ship but, goes. But that's just slow speed stuff. Anytime the engines are going, it's like slow speed stuff. Mm -hmm. But for light speed, I don't see them expel anything. They just go. Maybe it's the same tech. Miniaturized into a handheld weapon. That'd be neat. Well, I thought this was not a weapon. I thought this was like some sort of maintenance device because she's like maintaining stuff down here. Hmm. So it's somehow a tool. Oh, I thought she—I thought it was a taser because she had like, oh. she had stopped three or so people before from deserting. So I thought she had armed herself. Oh, maybe that's true. I can't I don't remember. Know. I don't know. Either way, it didn't look right. It didn't look right because he flies away mm -hmm. and she doesn't. But like, there's a force between them. There's a force between them. Yep. And it's Newton's third law for sure. Equal magnitude, opposite directions. Yep. It didn't happen. <laughs> 